Rivian have just revealed some really interesting information. They've been able to find out a way to increase the energy density in the electric battery packs in the R1T and the R1S, but only for the most expensive model, which comes with 410 to 420 miles of range. Is it worth getting that model? Well, it depends on how much money you have because it costs an extra 16,000 US dollars over the base model. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And I'm really impressed by RJ Scarring. I think I think the guy is really tuned in. Very smart. He's aware that Rivian are losing a lot of money on every single car they sell. What is it? Around 20,000 US dollars, something like that. It's a, it's a big number. He said, that there is a clear way for Rivian to reach profitability. Now, he didn't disclose what that was, but I think it's very clear what that is, and it's got nothing to do with 2170 battery cells. It's all about putting LFP cells into the Rivian R1T and the R1S. Once Rivian do that, that will reduce the battery pack costs enormously, probably by 30 to 40%. Now, considering the battery is probably 50% of the cost of a Rivian vehicle, when it comes to manufacturing, that's a game changer. Now, there is another path to possible increase in profitability for Rivian. That is this so-called increase or improvement in energy density in the battery pack. Now, it may be more to do with battery management software. It may be something to do with the new motors. Rivian are building them in-house. They seem more efficient. There's possible range of variations going on here. But let's have a look at what Rivian have just done with their new $94,000 Rivian R1T, which has 400 miles of range. I believe the R1T has 400 miles and the R1S has 410 miles. But either way, you're getting 400 miles or a little bit more of range on the biggest battery pack option. So how big is that battery pack that's giving these vehicles a lot of range? I mean, Australians, that's about 700 kilometers of range. That's a lot of range. For example, there's a lot of utes. I looked them up, pickup trucks, I looked them up. A lot of pickup trucks only get about that range in terms of if you use the entire tank, we're talking diesel fuel here, a lot of V8s engine pickup trucks will get less range than that, unless you get the version with a big fuel tank in it. And imagine how expensive that's gonna be. Imagine how much money that's gonna cost versus simply charging your pickup truck at home. So 149 kilowatt hours is the battery pack size in these new Rivian EVs. Rivian said this to Inside EVs today. Instead of adding more cells or modules to an existing battery pack, which would add more mass, our engineers developed a proprietary battery management system. I'm going to guess that's in combination with their new motors that optimizes and increases the usable battery energy from a new version of our 2170 battery cell with advanced chemistry that allows for both higher energy density and higher absolute energy. The total install capacity for the max pack is 149 kilowatt hours. So that's how Rivian have been able to get this kind of range out of a pickup truck. Of course, 2170 cells, they're not bad, but they're pretty old now. And there's definitely some better products coming to market soon. For example, CATL's Cheerin battery has significantly higher energy density than a 2170 cell. And that would be a good way potentially for pickup truck or vehicle manufacturers to improve their range. Now you're probably thinking, why am I talking about CATL? Well, they could easily build, well, not easily, but they could build a battery factory in the US licensing that technology. That's what I would be doing. I'd be building a battery factory in the US licensing LFP and Chirin battery technology from CATL. And that could be a path to profitability for Rivian. But getting back to this vehicle here, there's been a fair bit of a delay getting this product to market. We've heard about it for a while, but apparently you can now actually buy one. So they've just been delivered, the first of these have just been delivered to customers and the R1S SUV will come soon. I personally love the R1S SUV. In fact, I love both of these cars. I think they're both really cool. I think the pickup truck, the bed is a bit short. It'd be good if they offered a longer bed version that would give a lot of people who would be interested in, you know, being able to fit more stuff in the tray, another option. And obviously the F-150, uh, you know, the Chevrolet Silverado 1500, you know, these kinds of vehicles do have those options. In fact, some of them have the option of three different length trays. Could be one way for Rivian to look at differentiating their product, aside from just putting bigger battery packs. Now the max pack, some people said, would have a gross capacity of 180 kilowatt hours in order to get the range that they claimed, 400 miles or 410 miles, depending on the variant. 
But those people were just kind of the nanny naysayers saying, oh no, batteries will never improve. I know what I'm talking about. I'm an engineer. That were wrong. Rivian clearly have been able to achieve this with a much smaller pack, a 31 kilowatt hour pack, bigger than the claims made by so-called YouTube experts. By comparison though, the next size down battery pack is 135 kilowatt hours. So it's a 14 kilowatt hour bigger pack, but because of the improvements in energy density, you're seeing a significant gain in range. The smallest pack is a 105 kilowatt hour pack. And the range of that smaller pack with the 105 kilowatt hour battery is around 260 miles. Now, if you jump up to that mid spec, you've got to pay a fair bit more money. So the base model with that small 105 kilowatt hour pack with 105 miles of range is 78,000. Now, if you want to get the bigger battery pack, you've got to pay 10,000 US dollars more money, but it's a much bigger pack. And the range jumps from 260 miles to a much more, I think, real world what you need, 352 miles. So you're getting 92 more miles of range for 10,000 US dollars. Is it worth paying it? Well, personally, I think it is, unless you don't need to drive all that far. Now, if you want to pay more money and you want to get more range, then you jump up to this mega pack, which costs 16,000 US dollars more than the standard range pack. So to go from 260 miles of range to 410 miles of range, you've got to pay an extra 16,000 US dollars. Would it cost Rivian that much more money for the bigger battery pack? Well, probably not. I'm going to guess that it would be a little bit less than that, but you've got to recoup some of the engineering work. They've obviously put a fair bit of energy and work into getting this kind of efficiency, this efficiency improvement that is surprising a lot of people out of such a big basically off-road vehicle. These things are really, really good off-road. I've seen lots of reviews for them off-road and people say they're fantastic for that purpose. So what happens when you get the bigger battery pack? Well, the mid-sized battery pack, it's 135 kilowatt hours, right? So the big battery pack is only 14 kilowatt hours more. And that's obviously improving your range by nearly 60 miles. That's quite a good achievement from Rivian. You've got to give them some serious credit for that. And what power do these models come from? Well, all versions of the Rivian R1T and R1S come with the same dual motor powertrain. They have 533 horsepower, and this enables them to do zero to 62 miles an hour in 4.5 seconds, which is pretty good. You can pay more, though. You can pay an extra $5,000 to get the performance motors, and that gives you 665 horsepower. So you're increasing your horsepower by about 132 horsepower to get 665 horsepower, and that brings down the performance from 4.5 seconds to 3.5 seconds. Now, it's a completely per pointless waste of money, probably really for most people, $5,000 though, is not a lot of money to pay for what is a much more powerful motor. You got, you know, if you look at this in terms of other vehicles and in internal combustion vehicles, gasoline, diesel powered vehicles, if someone said, well, $5,000 more, we're gonna give you an extra 135 horsepower, you'd think, wow, that seems really cheap. But when you say this about electric cars, no one seems to care. Anyway, probably the reason for that is it's already insanely fast as it is. It's faster than a Ford Raptor, right? This gives you an idea of just how powerful the standard range already is. So what all this means is the Rivian R1S, so not the not the pickup truck, but the actual SUV version of the Rivian R1T is the longest range SUV available in America. And I believe Europe as well, 400. It gets a little bit less range for some reason than the pickup truck version. It's getting 400 miles. So the pickup truck gets 410, the SUV 400. But 400 miles of range in what is, I really think, a luxury vehicle. I really honestly do think they're a luxury vehicle. I'm a big, big fan of what Rivian's doing. I'm really excited to see them increase production. They're really they hitting their goals completely different to companies like Lucid and Vinfast, who are really just hot air. Nikola, just a bunch of hot air. Lucid are the real deal. But can they survive? Well, yeah, that is a really tough question. They are losing a ton of money. Is it true that RJ Scaringe can find a way to profitability based on what they're doing today? Absolutely not. That's completely mythological. There's no way. Yeah, battery pack prices will continue to come down. There's no doubt because there's this enormous ramp up of batteries. As the ramp up continues, more and more production, we're going to see 10 times more batteries being made in the US by 2030 than what they're at today. That will bring the prices down, but not enough 
that doesn't save you an extra twenty thousand US dollars per car. Plus, they got to make a profit, so they'd be selling them for twenty five thousand dollars more, really, to be making a profit on these cars. Are they going to be able to do that? They need to make a lot more cars. They need to use LFP batteries. If they can do those two things, yeah, maybe they'll survive. I really hope they do. What are your thoughts on that? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.